Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to turn to James chapter 4. Praise the Lord. We have not even started. We're only warming up. People think, well, we've been going on for some time. No, no, we're just only about starting. That was our training ground, you know what I'm saying. All right, James chapter 4, verse 6. You got it? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Res resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But notice how what he says. He says, before you can even resist the devil. Very important. Please take note of what I'm saying. Before you can even resist the devil. See, if you resist the devil, you should have a result. According to the scripture, if you resist the devil, your result should be that the devil will flee from you. You got that? But before the devil will flee from you, and before you resist the devil, the Bible says, submit yourself to God. You cannot resist the devil if you do not submit yourself to God. If you submit yourself to God, it gives you power in the realm of the Spirit. So some people say, well, we love God, we will listen to God, but we will not listen to man. Wrong. Tell your neighbor, wrong, wrong. wrong. God has placed authorities, according to the book of Romans, God's placed authorities in the land whom you should obey. In the church as well, he's placed authorities whom you should obey. Because God is using men and women. I, I like this. You know, something that will, will help you uh, start to focus right is the fact that if you can just bear in mind all the time that God is always using men and women, right? So if God is using men and women, it means that at some time or the other, he's going to get a man or a woman to speak to you. Now, if he gets a man or a woman to speak to you, it means that God is speaking through them to you. It means that you should be listening. You cannot say, I won't listen. I'll do my own thing. But thank God, I love him. I love Jesus Christ. And I'm walking in obedience. No, you're wrong. You're not walking in obedience. And uh, many times, what actually happens is that, and we're talking about the key word submission. Submission is, is a big word. And maybe I should just touch on that a little bit. Submission does not mean to say that you will submit to God by when you're in agreement to a thing. That is not true submission. Because anybody in agreement to a thing will always submit to the thing. For example, if you get an instruction, and if you're in agreement to the instruction because you like it, it sounds good, it's very easy to agree to that. There's no hassle. If I say, um, Pastor Wesley's jersey is gray, and I say, I think we should all wear gray, Everybody who's wearing another color might have a challenge except Pastor Wesley. Because he would say, I submit to that instruction. It's great. Why? He's wearing gray. Now, that is not true submission. Submission means that when you are given an instruction or when you're told something, true submission means I sometimes don't agree. But nonetheless, I submit to that. 
I agree with that. I'm willing to follow that. That is true submission. Maybe I should repeat that. Because especially in the house of God, Christians have the tendency to think, well, true submission is always I agree with something and then I submit to that. No, nine out of ten times you will be told something that you might not agree with. Now, if you submit to that, what are you doing? You're submitting to an authority. And when you can submit to that authority, whether you feel it's wrong or whether you feel uh, it's not, you're not happy with it entirely, but as long as you submit to it, guess what happens? You start to wield authority in the realm of the Spirit. Very important. Oh boy, I can't emphasize how important that is. Tell your neighbor, underline that. Because when you are fully submitted to the Word of God, you're fully submitted to God, if you're fully submitted to the people that are in authority in the house of God, you know what happens? you start to carry a level of authority in the Spirit. Oh boy. And sometimes people don't recognize that. They want to cast out devils, they want to pray for the sick, and they want to wield authority in the realm of the Spirit. But in the realm of the Spirit, you're actually naked. Why? Because you are not submitted. Now, submission does not make you weaker. Submission, any child of God or every man and woman of God who's able to submit, it makes you stronger. And I'm, not, I'm not just talking about it gives you strength. It gives you multipli multiplied strength. Now, when you are walking in that type of submission, boy, when you start to speak, something happens. I'm telling you, listen to me. When you start to speak, when you are submitted to God, you're submitted to His Word, you're submitted to the authorities that you can see, that's very important. Then you are not naked in the Spirit, you're clothed in the Spirit. When you are fully dressed in the realm of the Spirit, when you speak, you'll carry power. So if you want more power, submit. Tell your neighbor, if you want more power, submit. It, it, it is so simple, yet so powerful. And many of God's people don't know that. Submission is strength. Submission gives you power. You know, those flesh many times don't want to submit. But you have power over your flesh. Because your spirit man is the one that should be ruling a spiritual leader. A spiritual man or a woman. Because man, according to Thessalonians, is a tripart being, body, soul, spirit, right? I said body, soul, spirit. Your soul is the realm of man that, uh, you know, that operates his will, his, his emotions, his intellect. And then you have the body, of course. So your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions, and then you have your body. But a spiritual man should be a man or a woman who's so full of the Spirit of God, so yielded to God, that he's now ruling over the body and the soul. In other words, you're spirit man. And if you have that order, what actually happens is that the spirit man who's being the dominant part of the soul and the body. He's now dominant. He's taking over. You know where he gets his light from? The Word of God. Do you know where he gets his instruction from? The Word of God. Do you know where he gets his food from? The Word of God. And nothing then that you will do will ever be marked wrong or rejected as long as you are submitted to the Word of God. But most Christians are sense realm ruled. 
most Christians are sense realm ruled. So this is how it operates. I don't feel like praying today. I will not pray. I don't feel like being nice today. Why? I had a bad night. So I'm going to be bad to everybody. I'm going to be awkward to everybody. So I'm not feeling too good today. Don't talk to me today. Leave me alone. You understand now. You come to church. Someone jerks you. And uh, you're now frustrated. You're very cross. Someone's taken your parking place. So you come to church. You're sitting down. You're fuming. You're hot under the collar because why your body and your mind are saying to you, this is not fair. Someone parked where I should be parked. Now you miss the one hour of service where God is speaking a word. You miss all of that. Then you go away. Just, you just miss the whole thing. I remember when I was in Johannesburg. We were, um, they asked us to go two to three hours before the meeting. Brother Cliff was there and uh, Pastor Wesley and Mark, and, and I, I sat in my room while some of them went before me. But I sat in my room, and I said to Pastor Wesley, no, I won't go so early. I'll go about an hour before the service. So uh, one of the brothers were a bit, I don't know which one, but one of the brothers were a bit like kind of, no, we should go now. And I said, no, no. I said, I said, I won't go now. I said, I'll go a bit later. So, Pastor Wesley and I ended up alone in the room, and we were just chatting. I said, listen. I said, a king does not act like a child. A king does not talk like a child. A king does not carry himself or herself like a child. A king acts like a king. Very important. That's why you need to be trained. And part of what we tell you here in church is your training. So I said to Pastor Wesley, uh, follow my thinking. I said to Pastor Wesley, I said, if I go to the service and if they give me the last row, the seat in the last row, I'll be very happy. Is that what I said to you? I said, it doesn't matter where they let me sit. I'll be very happy. I said then further, I said, Pastor Weasley, if they shut the door to me and say, Pastor, you've missed out because the place is packed. We will not allow you inside. And for those of you that came to me to the meetings, you know that's very possible. We are lazy here. We come one minute to the start of the service and we think we're early. Well, God's checking your attitude. Some of us serve our, our natural boss more than we serve our heavenly boss. You, you understand? So I said to Pastor Wesley, I said, Wesley, if they shut the door and say to me, Pastor, you cannot come in. I said, Wesley, I'll go back to my hotel room and I'll be just as happy as if I was in the service. I will not be cross. Very important thing that I said. In other words, I have tuned to the frequency where I have predetermined in my mind and heart that nothing and nobody is going to upset me. Uh, that means now, no matter what I confronted at the service, it was not going to upset me. But some of you have not fine-tuned yourself, so this is how you walk in life. You walk, well, if I get a good seat, I'm happy like a lark. If I get a bad seat, then I'm upset. Then you sit in the service like, or if someone tramps my toes, then I'm upset. You're still a child. Tell your neighbor, grow up. Grow up. 
Kings don't get upset, they just make decisions. Oh boy, you missed that one. I said, Kings do not get upset, they make decisions. Yes, no, maybe I'll discuss it, we'll decide. We well, don't get upset. The Bible says that a man that has rule over his own spirit is stronger than the man that rules the city. That means take charge of yourself. Take charge of your personality. Every day, all of us, every day, we are all faced with enormous challenges. Some of the challenges are small, some are big. Each one of you are faced with different challenges on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's work, whether it's with the family, whether it's with the people you live, or perhaps even in church when you come. Let me tell you something. If you are looking to be offended, the devil will deliver one on the platter for you. As a child of God, as a spiritual Christian, as I serve God, well, I'm not letting anyone upset me. I'm not letting anyone...